Hey guys, have you ever been curious as to what photography school is actually like? Well, you're in luck because I'm actually going to be sharing with you my entire journey at photo school. Obviously, I can't share everything in this short video, but what I am doing is I'd like to start documenting my life so that one day my kids can see what my life was like in my younger days, spoken by me while I'm still young, while I'm still this age. So you can check out my other video linked down below on the importance of documenting your life. If you Google your grandparents, you're not really going to find anything. If you Google your parents, you might find, you know, a few things. But then if you Google you, you're going to find all your tweets, all your Facebook posts, all your Instagram stories, all of that's being recorded. So your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids are one day going to be able to look back and see what kind of life you lived. So with that in mind, he posed the question, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? I would love to see what my dad was going through at my age that I am now, as he was trying to figure out life with a family of four and, you know, with like hardly any money. And just to think of his thought process, like just to hear that, to see that, that would be amazing. So that's, that's why I'm doing it is because one day my daughter um, and other kids, if we have them, and great grandkids you know they're going to be able to see that one day and um, how, how precious is that now back to the title of this video i looked at my drives and I, I have an entire folder of everything i did while i was in photo school so what i plan to do is make a comprehensive series on what i learned in photo school and i'm going to make videos on the lessons the assignments and i'll show you what i did for those assignments and uh, also some of the backstories and observations i made along the way I was up and down on whether I wanted to actually go to photo school because obviously it's quite expensive and I'd already had a bachelor's degree and the idea of going back to school is not a cheap one. So while I was at work daydreaming, I was considering three of the top photo schools. The first was Rochester Institute of Technology, the second was Art Center in Pasadena, and the third was Brooks Institute in Santa Barbara. Now all were great programs, but it, for me it came down to this. RIT was in upstate New York where it's freezing cold uh, in the winter. Art Center, it's in beautiful Southern California in Pasadena, but it was the most expensive. And then that left Brooks. I mean, who would turn down living in Santa Barbara for a few years? And so I ended up at Brooks. The other drawbacks to RIT and Art Center for me personally was that they were more like traditional colleges with a robust course schedule, where even the general ed classes can be pretty intense. But Brooks was set up more like a trade school. Yes, there were general ed classes, but those are mostly a joke to meet the very minimum requirements for the school to be accredited as a bachelor's program in some way, shape, or form. Because, I mean, it was very, <laughs> very, I mean, I don't think it even got really accredited. It, it had trouble. I mean, the school had trouble just getting it, trying to get accredited in the more recent times. But that's not a knock to my gen ed class teachers. I actually learned some really valuable lessons. But having attended an actual university, um, the workload and curriculum just doesn't compare in terms of like the general ed classes. The real education and purpose behind Brooks uh, was obviously the photo classes. It was set up in a way to mimic real life assignments as, as much as possible. Our teachers were our teachers, but they were also our clients. Our assignments are basically like real world assignments. You know, they give us the parameters that we need to shoot in, and then we'd have to kind of concept and come up with the ideas. And then sometimes uh, there were some more straightforward assignments, but they were our clients. And so just like in the real, real world, you wouldn't accept a job and then not deliver. So there was no failing. If you failed uh, to meet the requirements for the assignment, then you can't just skip out. You have to go out and reshoot it. Anyway, I'll, I'll get into more of that later. In terms of photography school programs, not all schools are created equal. Some are more fine art oriented, some are more journalistic or documentary. Um, Brooks was a pure, well, pretty much purely technical uh, program. It concentrated primarily on producing students that can work in the commercial, advertising, and portrait world at, once they graduate. And yes, once upon a time, there was a photojournalism and graphic design program, but the far majority of students um, were in the, the pro photography program. And also there was a film program, um, as in the film or the movie industry in Ventura. There was another campus in Ventura. Um, but I'll be talking about my experience in, in the photo program in Santa Barbara. And of course, the school is no longer in business, which is 
a shame. Um, it was founded in the 1940s and it went on to become a premier photography school. But in 1999, the, the son Ernest Brooks Jr. sold it to a for-profit company, uh, which basically led to the eventual downfall of the school. The for-profit company basically milked the school for all it was worth. Um, it opened up the floodgates to let anybody who could get a student loan in and basically left a trail of astronomical student loan debt. And that ultimately ended up uh, abruptly shutting the school down in 2016. As in, the students were in class when they were told uh, the school was shutting down effective immediately. I mean, how ridiculous is that? And you could read more about it in the Wikipedia page. In 2004, 2005, there was a lawsuit uh, brought against the school uh, by, on behalf of the students. And basically, it was uh, because the students were get, sold on this grand vision, grand dream, grand uh, promises that were made to the students. Once they graduate, they'll get these, I don't know, fifty to $75,000 jobs after they graduate. But um, obviously, it couldn't produce those results once they just let anybody into the school. So there was this controversy back in mid-2000s. And I had actually read about that before applying to the school, but I ultimately decided to uh, go and roll into the school in 2009 because I figured while the administration wasn't exactly to be trusted, um, I knew the program itself was still there. I knew the teachers were still solid. I knew the education that they were, they were offering was still really, really good. And so kind of keeping that in the back of my mind, I, I decided I'm going to go uh, attend the school itself. And also because I was former military, I actually had the GI Bill to help pay for most of the cost. And so I enrolled in 2009 and I graduated in 2012. And so you could say I was in and out just before the roof collapsed, which is, again, really unfortunate because having gone through the school and the curriculum, it was a really good program. It was a really, really good, solid photography educational program. And so uh, part of the reason why I'm making this video series is to preserve that legacy in as much detail as I can. Let's talk about logistics. The typical schedule of a normal college is four years and two semesters a year, and, and that's a bachelor's degree. Uh, Brooks was broken up into six sessions a year, and each session was basically two months long. And because you can fit six sessions into a year, the entire bachelor's program could be finished in three years. It's as if you didn't skip the summer break in a normal four-year college and you just studied straight through, you'd finish sooner than four years. But what about summer break? Don't you need some time off to kind of re recuperate? So each two-month session at Brooks was broken down into seven weeks of class and one week of break uh, for a total of eight weeks per session. And so eight times six sessions uh, is 48 weeks. That leaves an extra four weeks out of the 52 week year, right? And so those uh, four weeks was split into the summer and winter breaks. You added two weeks onto a summer break and also two weeks onto winter, giving you a total of three weeks for winter and summer breaks. And I think that was actually quite a good amount of time to take uh, time off. Because I think a normal typical college summer break of two to three months off can be quite long. And you can actually get quite bored unless you actually have a specific plan for those two, two, three months off. And also, we were in photography school. I mean, we all wanted to shoot, so it was, ex it was actually exciting to be there. Okay, so for this series, um, I'm gotta love New York. Okay, so for this video series, I'm actually gonna go through my folders and um, go through each class. I'm gonna dissect um, every class uh, from Photo 101, basic intro to photography, to Photo 400, uh, whatever it was. Um, so I'm gonna make videos on all the lessons and also the assignments that I did, and I'll go into a lot of detail into that. Um, and I'll also show you what I did for the assignments. And perhaps if you wanna go out and shoot for yourself, Maybe if there's enough interest, I might create a Facebook group uh, and we can share and critique if you want to go out and shoot these assignments. Um, that would be cool. Maybe. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching till the end. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button down below um, and click subscribe if you find this video has sparked joy in your life. It really does help out the channel. And anyway, we're close to the first hurdle of a thousand subscribers. 
um, and 4,000 hours of watch time. We're very close. Next video, I'll talk about the top 10 reasons why photo school was the best. And yeah, so till next time. See ya.